All right. Uh, well, thanks everyone uh, for coming. I still don't know if I'm lucky or not to be the last one. Um, however, I really want to appreciate uh, all my colleagues who have already introduced many of the topics that I will mention uh, or that I will address in this uh, presentation. And um, Mateo, I'm second year student, actually not Aussie at all. <laughs> I'm from uh, Colombia, but I'm doing my PhD in, in Australia. And the title of my presentation is Design of uh, Fire Safe Bamboo Structures. So first of all, I would like to uh, explain why bamboo. And the reason is very simple. It's a material with really uh, good or with outstanding properties for being used as a construction material. Um, it has a really high strength to weight uh, ratio. The axial stresses in bamboo are quite high, comparable with, uh, mm, very, very similar to timber, but uh, quite high compar compared with uh, concrete, for example, in, in, in uh, compression. Uh, compressive strength of bamboo could be around 60 megapascals. Um, it's a uh, low density material. Uh, the density is a little bit uh, similar to hardwoods, uh, but obviously lower than traditional uh, conventional materials. Um, it has demonstrated really good seismic performance, particularly because of those two reasons. Uh, and in terms of uh, environmental impact, uh, it has a very fast growing rate. Uh, it can be used after between three and five years uh, with the, the mechanical properties that I already mentioned. Um, and obviously, it's a CO2 sequester. So you can see here some of the uh, applications of bamboo. Traditionally, it has been used in low-rise construction, uh, like uh, auditoriums, uh, halls, restaurants, and the dwellings. But uh, it has been also used in mid-rise construction, like this uh, luxurious hotel in um, Bali. This is in the round show, but recently there is a growing interest uh, in engineered bamboo products, like the laminated bamboo that you can see in this uh, column here. Um, so if you are not familiar with laminated bamboo, uh, this is more or less the process to make laminated bamboo products. You have the raw bamboo cone, you split the cone in different strips, you plant the strips to get these perfect rectangular uh, sections, and then you press uh, glue and press together those sections for uh, having a laminated bamboo uh, element like this one. So it, you can get regular and standardized uh, cross sections with laminated bamboo, something that you definitely cannot address with the raw bamboo. So that's what I consider this like an evolution of the raw bamboo. Um, but obviously you can get larger cross sections and you can increase the load bearing capacity of your elements. Uh, and because it's an engineering product, uh, you can decrease the scatter in the uh, mechanical properties of the material. So, um, but why is the relevance of fire? Uh, because as I already mentioned, there is an interest of uh, building with bamboo in mid and high rise construction. And this is not only happening with bamboo, it's happening with other natural materials like timber. And it's particularly in these situations when the fire safety strategy relies in the structural integrity of your uh, element and, and of your structure. Yeah. So, um, this is our responsibility as a structural engineers uh, to guarantee the uh, right performance of, bam of structures under fire. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have too much about this in uh, bamboo structures. So current, the few current guidelines, uh, a few standards uh, made from bamboo only allow the use of this material in low-rise construction because that's the way that you can guarantee a rapid evacuation. Uh, or uh, they recommend it to use encapsulated, uh, to encapsulate the element or to avoid exposure of the element, which is not really um, wanted by architects and developers. Um, so it's fundamental, uh, fundamentally important to understand the performance of bamboo structures if we really want to develop in this industry in the future. Uh, what has been done until today? So, there is few studies in bamboo, so we have to look at studies of timber. And as you can see here, uh, people have already reported reduction in the mechanical properties of uh, timber uh, lignocellulosic materials uh, at elevated temperature. Uh, some other authors have reported changes in the failure mechanisms. And there is uh, a 
lot of studies, several studies done in charring rates and understanding the reduction in the uh, cross-section of elements uh, because of the fire, and some other effects which are very important, particularly in engineered products, which are the potential of the lamination, when you have glue lines, particularly very important in bamboo because you have so many glue lines, many more than CLT, uh, and the effects, obviously, of the different kind of glue that you can use. So the methodology that we have proposed to understand the fire performance of bamboo, uh, of bamboo structures, have the, can be divided in three uh, steps. The first one is to understand the reduction in the mechanical properties, particularly strength and um, stiffness uh, in two load conditions, compression and tension. Then we are aiming to uh, analyze bigger elements. This is something that we have developed uh, in a, a small scale, but then we want to go to bigger scales and then start changing the heating regimes in our elements, uh, particularly in compression and bending, uh, which are the main uses of uh, laminate bamboo. Um, obviously, we have conducted these uh, uh, experiments in raw bamboo, in, and in laminated bamboo, but I will explain later why uh, we want to develop uh, further research in laminated bamboo. And uh, finally, we would like to uh, use some numerical modeling in order to predict the response of those structural elements under fire. So, first outcomes of my research uh, have been uh, related to the compressive strain of bamboo at elevated temperature. So we use an environmental chamber uh, in which we controlled uh, the temperature inside the chamber. We did uh, previously a uh, thermal characterization of uh, this experiment. We um, controlled the temperatures in depth, and then we established the conditions for rich and steady state condition. So basically, the whole cross section is at the same temperature. We have to wait until a certain time. And when we reach the steady state condition, we conduct the, uh, the test, and this is more or less the result. So as you can see here, there is a significant change in the failure mechanisms of uh, raw bamboo. This is the, temp the curve at ambient temperature. The, you have the highest strength, but as soon as you start increasing the temperature, you reduce the strength, but you gain some ductility in the material. But above 160, uh, then you have a completely different failure mechanism. So at the beginning, you can have like some um, global buckling and splitting between um, the uh, bamboo, uh, some splitting between bamboo. But at elevated temperatures, you start having things like, for example, uh, inwards buckling. And for very uh, at elevated temperatures, you have instead of having a global buckling, you have more like a, a local buckling in the in the wall thickness. When we felt very confident with this methodology, then we uh, conduct the same um, we conduct the same test with uh, laminated bamboo. Sorry. Um, so this is uh, the same test with laminated bamboo. We use the standards for. Uh, uh, glue uh, timber, uh, because there isn't any standard uh, for, for uh, engineered bamboo. And then we saw a very similar behavior. There is a change in the failure mechanisms. And instead of having crushing in the uh, first samples uh, tested at ambient temperature, then we saw a buckling failure in, in samples at elevated temperature. So this is a summary of the results in compression, particularly this graph if is for laminated bamboo. And you can see here the normalized strength of the material, normalized uh, comparing the strength at ambient temperature against the strength at elevated temperature. And as you can see here, there is a significant reduction in the strength, particularly at quite low temperatures for a fire. Uh, you, at 100 degrees, you are losing around 70% uh, of the strength of the material. And we managed to measure the uh, elastic modulus as well. And this is the reduction in the elastic modulus, which is not as higher as in the strand, but it's still very significant for, for, for bamboo. Uh, for a second group of tests, then we repeat, uh, or we did another kind of test for uh, tensile strength. And so we prepare uh, bone shapes uh, samples in which uh, all the samples had a node uh, in, the, in the middle of the sample. So we induced a failure uh, a section. Uh, and we knew that because 
the node in bamboo is the weakest part in tension. It's at that point the fibers are interrupted, and then you lose the continuity of the fibers. Obviously, you lose uh, most of the strength. And because we knew that the failure was going to occur at this point, then we um, heat up the sample at that particular point with a heating blanket. We couldn't use the environmental chamber for doing this test, so we use a heating blanket, we use a PID controller, and then we were measuring the temperatures at that point, uh, controlling very well the conditions and uh, conducting the test of, uh, after we reach the, again, the steady state condition. So we repeat uh, this process, we condition the samples, particularly for this, for this test in a uh, climate constant chamber uh, in order to have same moisture content for every sample. And those are the results for the tensile strain. Again, here you have the normalized strength at uh, elevator temperature, uh, tensile strain at elevator temperature. Again, uh, there is a significant reduction in the strength uh, in the tensile strain, however, the reduction is not as higher as in, as in compression. What we can see here is that uh, the, the strain is relying in the uh, strain of the fibers, which doesn't have the same reduction than the matrix. And there is also a reduction in the modulus of elasticity. So after having these uh, parameters and after having built these uh, constitutive models, then we move to a bigger element. So we have a laminated bamboo column um, now the section is a little bit bigger. We have a cross section of 70 mil by 100 mil. Uh, we, the length is uh, 420 mil. We uh, keep the same um, slanderous ratio for the sample, the same that we were using for the other um, samples. And then uh, for, we apply a constant load, so in this case, we um, keep the same, for, uh, the same force, so it was a force control test. 30% uh, of the failure load at ambient temperature, we are still ha are in the elastic region. Um, and for the heating conditions, then we apply um, a heating flux of 10 kilowatts per square meter, uh, reaching more or less temperatures of around 200, 220 uh, degrees at the hot surface. So, um, Going back to the basics, to the fundamentals of uh, mechanics, and of course we, ha we were applying an uh, axial load. Uh, it's, uh, the temperature is constant at, um, at the beginning of the test. This is the time zero. So we have a constant temperature uh, because there isn't any uh, thermal gradient, so our elastic modulus is constant in the cross section. And particularly because of that reason, we have a uh, uniform stress distribution, and the resultant force is uh, uh, crossing the um, neutral axis. And of course, we can use uh, Hooke's law to predict the behavior of that column. But if you look at the results, this is what happened after 43 minutes of conducting this test. So we were applying the heat by this side, and as you can see here, there is a combined action in the failure of this uh, column. So let's come back to our column. Uh, we are heating by this side. This is the depth of my sample. Here we have the zero mil. This is the 70 mil. Uh, we were applying a constant load, um, time zero in blue, and time 40, you can see the uh, um, results uh, in green. And of course, after 40 minutes, there is a significant gradient, thermal gradient, in our sample. And as we, uh, and according to the results that we obtained before, that gradient, it's creating a, or that elevator temperature is creating a reduction in the elastic modulus of the material. So now, the elastic modulus of the material is not constant anymore in the cross section. And because that's re that reduction in the cross section, our stress distribution cannot be uniform anymore. So the internal stresses are changing along the cross section, and therefore the resultant force is not crossing by the neutral axis, and then we are having a bending moment, which at the end is helping to produce the failure. So 
This is part of the analysis that we are conducting right now. Um, definitely we are, this is just the beginning of the test that I'm doing at my PhD. I'm still in the second year, so uh, I'm planning to do much more tests, but we would like to address uh, different effects. So one is the thermal effects, which in this particular case is not governing the problem. What we uh, believe that is governing the problem is this combined action of compressive uh, uh, stresses and bending stresses. Uh, but the problem here is that the moment and the stiffness of the material is changing with temperature, uh, what it means that it's changing in time. So what we want to do in order to simplify this problem is that if this is our cross-section and we divide our cross-section in different slices, every slice is going to have a different mechanical property. But in order, because we have a thermal gradient, so we have a fire happening here. But um, if we use the equivalent section method, we can assume that the uh, mechanical properties are going to be the same in every slice, and then we only play it reducing the cross-section of every slice in order to um, simulate the reduction in the mechanical properties. So part of the future work that I would like to do um, is uh, obviously I would like to complete some other tests at environmental chamber, and this is something that I was uh, asking Dorothy, uh, which did a quite similar work, the first presentation today, um, to uh, improve my graph and to uh, complete the, pot, the, the points in order to have like a robust uh, uh, study in the mechanical properties, but I also want to use DMA to um, understand the reduction in the mechanical properties. Uh, DMA is the dynamic mechanical thermal analysis. Um, where I would like to conduct tests in bending. Uh, so this is part of uh, the work that has been done for a master's student in my research group. This is a uh, glue lamp beam reinforced with a, uh, FRP. So I plan to do the same with uh, laminated bamboo, but I also need to improve the setup in the compressive uh, columns and obviously do repeat the, the, the test at different heating regimes and different load conditions. Um, and finally, keep working in the numerical model in order to understand uh, a little bit better what is happening there with the reduction in the mechanical properties. So as a conclusion, um, and as I already showed here, there is a significant reduction in the mechanical properties. The values that we have found are very comparable with the reduction in timber at elevated temperature. Uh, which is another lignocellulosic material. At, this, at, at the end, the uh, components in the, uh, the material are pretty much the same. Um, the reduction in the stiffness is uh, changing the failure mechanisms in the material. We saw that we moved from uh, having a crushing failure in laminated bamboo to a buckling failure in, in samples uh, tested at elevated temperature. Um, the, when you are heating, uh, uh, bamboo columns by one side, uh, you can see that uh, the failure is produced by a combined action, uh, produced due to the reduction in the mechanical properties. And I think this is one of the most significant uh, conclusions of this work, and it's like, uh, at the end, we need to focus on the reduction of the mechanical properties. Most of the analysis developed to timber elements is being focused in the um, charring rates in the reduction of the cross sections because of the char. But as I, are as, I, as I show here, there isn't any char in my material. The, we were applying very low heat fluxes, and there wasn't any char because the temperature was never above 300 degrees. And it's that reduction what is creating the, um, the reduction in the mechanical properties is really what is creating the, the failure. Uh, so this, uh, this is a change in the way that we are analyzing um, lignocellulosic uh, lin materials, and it's definitely something that it can be applied to uh, timber. So the impact of this research is establishing the basis for design safe bamboo structure. Uh, we would like to design those structures with the same confidence that we design other conventional materials. Well, I'm not completely sure if we are confident enough, but at least uh, try to reach that point and obviously uh, improve or create new uh, standards for using bamboo in future applications, possibly uh, in tall bamboo buildings uh, when definitely fire performance is a big issue. But obviously as well, this is something that it can be applicable to timber as well and it's a problem that the timber industry is facing right now. Um, well, thank you to the institution for uh, 
allow me to be here. Uh, thank you for your attention and thanks to my research group as well.